What's up? So, I've decided to put this video on YouTube here because there's not a whole lot of information on what I'm doing here. Um, so, what I have is a 1988 S10 Blazer. Uh, it's four wheel drive, that's, that's the issue here. Um, because most of the V8 swaps are on two wheel drive jobs. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it's four wheel drive. It was originally a 2.8, so uh, I'm swapping it and putting an LS in it. Uh, we're going with the uh, 5.3 motor. Um, it's just mildly built. I mean, a little bit of a cam and stuff like that. Um, stock heads, uh, just painted it up, made it look pretty, basically. But anyway, um, what what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk walk y'all through some of the stuff that I've done to it. Kind of uh, as I'm learning, I'll show you guys what I was doing. One thing I forgot to mention that I've had a horrible time with is the exhaust manifolds. Now, these are the ones that I went with. And as you can tell, they're not headers or anything. Those are the exact factory ones that came off of the motor. And what I had to do is set them up on a mill and take a quarter of an inch off of the bottom of this and leave the top factory. So it would like move the bottom in towards the block to hug the block a little bit more. The reason I had to do that is because of this steering shaft right here. Um, it is all up in the way, so um, with the headers, which I tried two different sets of shorty headers, there is a company, I can't remember the name of it, but you can do an internet search for four-wheel drive headers and it gives you long tubes. Um, they're like 800 bucks for a set of long tubes and I didn't really want to do that, so I tried two sets of shorties. One was made for a two-wheel drive setup, which I didn't know that until I bought it. Uh, two-wheel drive only and it dumped right down into the top of this so that wouldn't work so I got another set and uh, one side would work but the other side wouldn't so I ended up beating the ever living out of it trying to get it to work and heating it up and all this and that's yeah it ended up not looking good so uh, and it still wasn't going to work it was going to hit I actually modified this shaft right here this is the factory shaft and I ordered this off of Amazon. Uh, it wasn't. It was like 20 bucks or something. Um, and uh, you can also get them from Flaming River, but they're a whole lot more expensive. <clears throat> and uh, fitted it to the factory shaft and got rid of that huge joint that was right here. The rag joint is still under here and it's still fine, so I'm going to use it. But with those factory exhaust manifolds, it will work. Um, I would suggest, if you don't have the ability to, to machine that down, as getting some of, uh, Hooker has some cast iron, like hot rod manifolds. Um, that's probably what I would go with, or like block, block hugger manifolds. That'll give you a whole lot more room uh, underneath the hood here. So anyway, just wanted to add that in. All right, so first thing, um, you can see over here where I had to notch the frame. Uh, you have to do that for the air conditioning compressor. Uh, the air conditioning compressor is down bottom on these. You can see it's like way down in there. So there was not enough room between the frame rails to fit it in here. So even on the two wheel drive ones, you have to notch the frames, but the frames are completely different um, on four wheel drives and two wheel drives. So, as long as you bring it up to like right here at the edge, um, then you shouldn't have any problems. I've fitted this motor like, good golly, like 40 times by now, in and out, in and out. So, uh, I fitted it down in there and uh, I made some um, templates out of cardboard and fitted it in here basically and then cut all these out on the bandsaw and uh, welded them all in. It's not the prettiest welds in the world but it's my first time stick welding so we made it happen. But anyway, um, the other deal is I thought that I could get away with 
uh, out, out not having to do was this air box deal. You can see this here where it's been cut. I had to do all that and then refiberglass it back in. Originally it came just straight across and I thought that if I had the, the coils not mounted to the valve covers uh, that I could get away without doing that but in order to slide it back as far as I could and make it to where the transfer case and all that was going to be lined up so I wouldn't have to modify the drive shafts and all that um, I ended up having to, to cut that. I'm still not going to put the coils back on top of the valve covers because they just look a whole lot better I think uh, like that I just painted them up and uh, might cut some some like aluminum plates or something to go over it uh, on the CNC and make them pretty or whatever but either way I think it looks a whole lot better um, personally without the coils on there so but anyways you can see right here is taking it in and out it's actually bumped that right there so it's pretty close to the back but everything is going to be functional um, it's still going to obviously have air conditioning and and all that and uh, it should all work so um, it's going to have cruise control and all that I want it to be a nice driver so I didn't go with a crazy cam or anything like that um, I ended up going with a uh, Brian Tooley racing cam um, can't remember the specs on it. It should be pretty lopey, but it's very drivable. Uh, so anyway, uh, all over here is the wiring. Uh, that's what I've been working on here. Uh, it had the wiring harness that went all the way across, like right here, and then came down, and there was uh, like a plug that went right there, went through there, and the original computer is located in there, which I'm leaving it. I'm not going to use any of it, but I'm just going to leave it in there. So, anyways, this is what's left of the wiring harness. Um, I got all this information here uh, off of v8s10.org. Um, this is the plug. It has all the all the pinouts and everything on it, so that you can tell which ones you need um, off of the block right here. Uh, you got it, the reading reading it is actually like looking at it like this so you can go and see which ones you need um, and cut the ones out that you don't I'm gonna have uh, a block I've bought a block to go here like a ground block and a power block and all that stuff will bolt right here so that I'll have main power and main grounds that'll run back to the battery and the chassis so anyways uh, as I keep doing stuff I will keep you guys posted and uh, we'll go from there so the radiator and all that stuff I haven't gotten yet um, probably gonna end up just going with like an aluminum radiator or something this is a, kind of a budget build so I uh, just want to make a nice driver that'll move along um, I ended up with this uh, this blazer was a one owner so um, they're a little bit hard to find with no rust the only rust that this one has is uh, right here which was in a weird spot so you can see that right there and then it had some rust around the windshield I had to take the windshield out and fix all that but uh, the interior is in really good shape it's dirty right now but everything is it, only, it has uh, 163,000 miles so um, seats are folded down in the back right now but when I first cleaned it up I mean it was like it was like a time capsule. I mean, it was in really good shape. I have, this is where I took all this out from underneath there because the um, where the computer and stuff is is all located underneath here. So all this is the cover for it, which is the reason it's in here. And I've got some more pinouts and everything. All this stuff was off of v8s10.org. This is uh, this is the pinout for the gauge I'm putting aftermarket gauges in it but this is the plug for the gauges in the back um, so you know which ones are which and then you can tie them to the to the ones that are out underneath the hood and uh, you won't have to run so many wires so yeah there you go so there you go I'll post this you guys can watch it and follow whatever um, might be helpful
because there's like no information on full drive swaps. Very few. So anyway, see you later.